scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, baby. Come chill with me, the Empress, in the Champagne City. You see it. <laughs> For some grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we get classy with a twist, huh? A little clink and chaos. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, come on in. And if you're a non-alcoholic kind of confidant, grab you a non-alcoholic bubbly and get in here. And if you're listening in the morning, go ahead and throw some orange juice in and make it a mimosa. <laughs> so for today, I'm sipping on, you already know, Moet and Chandon Imperial Nectar Rosé. You see it. You see it. <laughs> Now, if you listen to my other show, then you know we're doing a new thing over here in the chalet. We are starting our show with positivity and encouragement. So if you're ready, go ahead and raise those glasses high so I can drop some encouragement in your life. <laughs> you are a radiant star, sparkling with the brilliance of your own design. Each facet of your being is a testament to your uniqueness, a masterpiece of originality. You are not a copy, but a designer's original baby, crafted with precision and purpose. Embrace your flaws, confidant, as the brushstrokes that make you one of a kind. Embrace your individuality, for it is your superpower. You are more than enough, just as you are. Each day, paint the canvas of your life with boldness and confidence, knowing that your uniqueness is what makes you truly remarkable. Let your light shine bright, for the world is waiting to be dazzled by your essence. So let's toast to you, confidant, believing in yourself. For you are a work of art, a designer's original, crafted to perfection, and the world is ready to see you shine. So, um, I don't know if any of you noticed, but I had posted some shorts of the Baddies East reunion, and I ended up getting a copyright strike, uh, actually for the one that I did on Tzatziki which was surprising. Um, but I did reach out to the girl at Zeus who sent the strike. Um, and I told her I would take the videos down. I was kind of confused though because it's all kind of video clips over the internet. And as small as my channel is, you would strike me. But the rules are the rules. So I did pull them down uh, and I told them I would refrain from using their actual video footage. Um, in any of my reactions so they told me they would remove the strike it's all good <laughs> uh, so I was working on my newest episode for my Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries channel and this video popped up with Natalie kind of giving her reaction I guess to the situation with ET on the reunion and I'm going to post a clip of it for you and then we're going to have a little chat. All right. Watch this. Hey, her, Rolly, um, everyone from House A, we would go out and turn up and have fun. Right. You know, I, I treated her to a lot of nice dinners, restaurants, Sunday fun day brunch. You know, it's like I, when I take the girls out, it's not a couple hundred dollars, it's like $10,000 bills. Right. Okay. So I invited you out the whole season with us. Now, ever, ever since after the show, 
I don't, I, I don't, I only hung out with E.T. when we did the baddie pop-up, the Natalie Nunn pop-up at Backpack Boys. She yeah, came out. <laughs> and I invited her out, I invited all the baddies out. But then, I haven't really seen her, or I don't really, t like, call or talk, I don't. Is that why she made the comment? So, yeah. So, I, she, so, I was confused, like, if I knew we had beef, I would have been ready. You could, bitch, if you got a problem with me, so what did she have just say, hey, bitch, what's up, stand up, type right. of shit. Like, if you want to square up with me. I'm like... I don't even think she was running at me. I like babe, that's why I, you do see my. I have a quick reflex, so my leg was up fast in a hurry because the bitch just took off and I had no idea what was going on. And so, and when I say bitch, I'm just saying bitch. Like I don't, I don't care enough to like call her a bitch. Yeah, saying bitch. Like. Right. So, and I'm not. I'm still not. I'm not mad at ET. It just make it make sense. If you got a problem with me, she could have she could have called me on the phone after the show and said, "Hey, Nat, you know, I'm dealing with a lot, a lot's going on. The show, the fans, the it's a lot. <clears throat> Can you call and check on me every now and then and make sure I'm good?" Bitch, I'll shoot her a text or whatever. I just once the show's over, we all go about whatever we're doing in life. Like we have lives. And see, this is where I think there's a danger in crossing networks, right? Because with Now That's TV, these individuals aren't celebrity status. They're regular individuals who had the opportunity to get on a show um, to kind of showcase who they are. But when it comes to Zeus Network and the baddies, these are individuals who have reached a certain level of celebrity. So you take this regular girl who's used to um, dealing with people in regular everyday life and you put her on this show and in her case she thinks that she's found a sisterhood friendships bonds because that's what's developed on now that's tv and she's able to get close to natalie nunn and be in the same house with natalie nunn who in her own right has a celebrity status and somehow, E.T. thought she had formed a sisterhood with Natalie. And I'm trying to figure out how she felt that when we've seen all the relationships that have broken up with Natalie. And I almost feel bad for E.T. because she went in expecting one thing and she got another. She got na uh, industry Natalie, not best friend, sisterhood, Scotland Natalie. She didn't get that. She got, as long as we're recording, we're good. But once the recording is over with, it's on to our everyday lives and you're not a part of my everyday life. And I think low key it hurt her. I think low key she was hurt and this was her way to respond to being hurt. As I said in one of my other videos, after the show was over with, you didn't see E.T. with them. You didn't see Natalie talking about E.T. And I think deep down, because of how close she thought they were on the show, she expected more from Natalie. But I'm trying to understand why. I still don't get why. And this is the danger of crossing the networks. Because they're two different networks. They are two different. Zeus is extremely grimy, like the industry. And even though there's a lot of fights and all of that on Now That's TV, Now That's TV are regular people. They are regular people who've been given an opportunity to be on a show. And that's the difference. Now, I did see E.T.'s live where she was saying that when she came out, the girls were standing up already. That's not the case, E.T. I mean, you don't have to lie to kick it. That's not the case. Because you had already said to Rowley backstage that you had someone that you were going to get that no one knew about. She's hurt. She's hurt, and I want to say rightfully so, only because she didn't know any better. But this is why you shouldn't be so gassed up. At the end of the day, leave money about money. This, is, this show isn't about friendships. She wasn't in tune with her star player. She was trying to be a shine on Natalie's star, and that's where she went wrong. She should have let the show be the show instead of trying to expect a sisterhood to come out of the show. You've only been together for a few weeks. This girl don't know you. You don't know her. I am a firm believer in the law of first mention. When this girl first saw you in the audition, she told you what she thought about you. Not only did she tell you what she thought about you, she told you what she thought about the show you was on. She said she didn't know you and she's never seen the show. Basically letting you know, since you claim you're a reality star, how if I don't know who you are? 
She already told you what she thought about you. She put you on the show because that's what the fans asked for. That's why you were on the show. Not because she cared about you. And once her fans turned on you, she did too. So I feel bad. I feel bad that you didn't go in with your antennas up knowing the situation you were walking into. But this is the problem that I have with people that go on baddies. They don't go on to showcase who they are. They go on to kiss up to Natalie. If E.T. would have went on this show being herself authentically, like Stunna did, because Stunna didn't kiss up to nobody, even though I didn't care for her on the show. She was herself, and she wasn't going to bow down just because Natalie Nunn is Natalie Nunn. And that's what E.T. should have done. But now her feelings are hurt. Hurt one, because Natalie introduced her to an entirely different lifestyle than she was used to. And now all of a sudden it's been taken away. But also baddies opens you up to a totally different crowd. A different crowd of rejection and criticism that she wasn't necessarily going to get on Now That's TV because everyone isn't watching Now That's TV. But the world watches baddies and she wasn't ready for it. Maybe baddies needs to be left for those who already have somewhat of a celebrity status because everyone can't handle it. Everyone is not ready for criticism from the world. <laughs> what do y'all think? Drop in the comments and let me know. Confidants, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.